congratulations. I know it's your wedding shower. Um, you must feel amazing. So me and Martha just wanted to come in and just say congratulations, just give you a couple of um, words of advice for marriage. I think um, the first thing is gonna be communication. That is so important just to be transparent with your partner and just have an open communication. Wouldn't you say that, babe? Yes, I agree. It's being able to have the conversation, even when they're uncomfortable, even if it's something that you're not sure exactly how to put it in words, whether it means writing it down so that you can make sense of it. But having those conversations will save you a lot of headaches. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think um, compromise is probably also a very big one, too. Um, when you take into the context of marriage, you're going to have a lot of easy conversations, but there's going to be a lot of hard ones, too. Um, each person needs to put down their pride. You're going to meet halfway on a lot of situations. But again, compromise is key. And as long as you kind of get into and get into expecting that it's going to happen, I think you're going to be all right. So I think that that's something that you should take in as well in terms of in terms of kind of next steps and, and advice for the marriage you're going through. Yeah, it's it's not a race to who's right. Um, it's a race to solving every issue together, getting to the bottom of it. So putting your pride aside, putting your ego aside, being able to apologize when, you, when, when you're wrong, seeing where the fault is. And that really is um, a good key to making your, your marriage work, we think. Yeah. And, um, and just being each other's friends, right? Um, being each other's friends, having that, being able to sit down, have a conversation open, honestly, that's your person. That's your partner. So you got to just feel comfortable around them and that should get you through, um, you know, keeping God first. Prayer is probably one of the most important things that, that kind of keep a marriage kind of glued together. So never forget that aspect as well. Yeah, I've always told um, people that Daniel is my friend first. Some may agree, some may not agree. So when I'm upset at my husband, I want to talk to my friend. And I feel like when you are a friend, you're always, you know, when you have your friend, your girlfriend, whether it's a guy friend, you want to talk to them. You want to have a conversation with them. So that's something that we believe is very important. And yes, prayer is key. We, we, we already know you guys know that. That's your foundation, being able to bring God into your marriage. Let him be the center of your marriage. And then um, the last thing to add to that would be keep doing what you were doing um, that led you to saying that you want to be life partners. If you were dating, you know, going out, celebrating each other, it doesn't stop after you get married. You are, marriage is just a lifetime having someone to date for a lifetime. So you keep dating, you keep doing everything, the same energy, the same thing that you were doing before, you continue to do it yeah. and you'll be fine. But we're here 10 years in, um, we're no expert, but we can always um, be a listening ear should you guys need anything. We're happy for you and we wanna say congratulations. Congrats guys, we love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Hello. This is Pastor and Mrs. Norman Coleman. We are Godfrey's other parents. We have been married 40 years this coming August 16th. So I don't know if I even remember the first 24 months. However, this is my advice for this first 24 months as well as for the next 38 years. The Bible says in the Old and the New Testament that we are to love God with all our hearts, our souls, our strength, and our mind, and our neighbor as ourselves. I am well aware and confident both of you love God, but I want you to understand that you need to treat each other as a neighbor. Remember to say please, thank you, excuse me, and you're welcome. Just as if you were saying it to the man next door or to the person at work, you need to remember your first neighbor is each other. I want to uh, share something with you that my mother-in-law, Mrs. Ruth V. Banks, who uh, went to be with the Lord some years ago, she told me just before Angelique and I got married, she says, listen, you're not her father and she is not your mother. So Godfrey, uh, you are not Nadia's father. Nadia, you are not Godfrey's mother. Y'all are both adults. The Bible says, come let us reason together. And so in other words, whatever the situation, sit down and talk it out 
uh, respect each other. That's, that's what it's all about. Respect each other as adults. Amen. So that's our advice. We hope it's helpful. God, God bless, bless you, you both. both. We, we love, love you. you. Guys. We are the Tebos. <laughs> and I'm Shanisa. I'm Johnny Tian. AKA Junior. Yeah. Um, we are very, very, very excited for Nadia and Godfrey, I'm aka excited. Willis. Almost Willis. Hey. <laughs> we are so psyched and so excited. And we are six months into our marriage. So yeah. we're even more New, happy newlyweds. for you guys because we're newlyweds and we're able to we're able to be newlywed buddies. Yay! <laughs> so, um, I'm grateful. We're grateful to be able to give you advice from our point of view for our first six months. Because we're still fresh. And yeah. there's a lot of things that people don't remember in their first six months of marriage. So, it, we're happy that we're able to give you this advice in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to start? Yeah. Um, so, most important thing you guys need to do is pray. But pray together. Um... I would challenge you guys to uh, do devotion together um, morning and evening, if possible. Uh, I know your schedules may be busy, but it's important that you uh, pray together and make sure that you uh, together have that spiritual journey together because that's going to be important, especially when you guys will have your arguments and disagreements um, to lean on prayer. That's the most important thing that will hold you. So that's the advice I could give you. Amen. Junior stole my. He stole my first couple I of lines. I, I wrote did mine out. Steal. Junior did, did his in his I did head. Not steal. It's all up there. <laughs> Junior stole mine. But guys, the best advice we can give you because prepping for a wedding, prepping for marriage, yes. the wedding is gonna come and go, but your marriage is for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Prayer is the key to everything. Praying yeah, in the morning, definitely. praying in the night, praying when you're snacking, pray when you're in the bathroom. Pray, 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 and continue to pray together. Yeah. Even when you Most pray definitely. apart, pray together. Pray for your partner as your partner should pray for you because we're praying for everything around us. We're not praying for each other. Mm -hmm. Praying for each other is the main thing that you need to do and pray for your unity yeah, because the devil is attacking and he's not happy for your marriage. But God is in control and mm -hmm. everything is going to be perfect. Um, I'm so happy that God allowed us to be able to, in the midst of everything going on, to allow us to see Godfrey and Nadia get married. Mm -hmm. God is an amazing God, and the best thing is unity, marriage. God wants to see this in life, so we're just I'm just so happy that you guys are in a place in life where, even through the pandemic, your marriage is still pushing through. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone told us this, but remember to always remember that life gets hectic. So remember that every day we'll have the same routine and um, you'll forget that it's just it's the same routine. So you need to continue dating each other. You need to always remember that this is my boyfriend before he was my husband. This is my this is my best friend. So remember to date him. Godfrey, remember to always chase after Nadia. Make sure the chase is always on a thousand. Don't get lazy. Don't think, oh, I got her already. I don't need to do this. No. Remember, it's the little things that she's going to remember. So bring home flowers. Bring home food. Even when even when um, you feel like, oh, she's cooking, call her and say, babe, you don't have to cook tonight. I got this. It's the little things that matter. Continue to date your wife. Second thing and last thing is, my aunt said this to me one time. Remember to keep your conversations and your arguments and whatever you're going through to yourself. Mm -hmm. If That's you can't tell your partner, tell the toilet bowl. After God, it's the toilet bowl because you can flush it down the toilet and no one will ever hear it again. Mm -hmm. Do not speak your problems to others because those are the same people that are going to bring back your problems to your face. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be a pretty sight. Remember that if it's not God, it's no one. Don't put your family in your marriage. Don't put your friends in your marriage. 
it's you and your husband i'm so excited for you guys we are so excited for you guys and we hope that we hope to see you guys reach us the six months that we reached to happy always arguing and doing stupidity like our arguments are funny arguments because we're always like playing (laughs) but we um hope that you guys continue to play pray and keep happiness in your unity love you guys love you guys Hey, Godfrey and Nadia. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations on this big step. Socks, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> um, first, we want to say that we are just so happy that you guys are in our lives. We are so grateful. We first met Godfrey, and he's a great man of God. Um, and then we were introduced to you, Nadia, and you're a great woman of God, and we're just so excited for you guys and for your journey as a married couple and as as it begins. Um, I guess some advice that we can give is um, to surround yourself with other married uh, couples. Um, Use them as examples. We got this devotional here. It's called Love Dare from... um, a married couple, you guys know them, the Braxtons, and basically it has 365 days, um, a year devotion for couples, and of course everything is centered around God. Keep God in the middle of your marriage and um, everything else should fall into place. We have um, a book that we suggest called The Love Languages. So. Uh, for instance, like my husband's love language is physical touch. <laughs> and physical touch doesn't have to mean sex per se. Um, it could just be intimate. Like he likes when I, you know, rub the back of his neck or if we're talking and I'm rubbing his back. Um, and then my love language is... What do you think, Godfrey? Gifts and words of affirmation. So even though, um, like, uh, let's say, for example, my birthday, um, I don't really care too much about gifts or, you know, um, you know, doing anything per se. As long as we're together, I'm happy with that. But I know I can't expect the same for her. I know on her birthday, she likes gifts. So, you know, uh, Valentine's Day, she likes gifts. Whatever day, you know, she likes gifts. She likes me to tell, you know, when she get dressed, you know, how pretty she looks, how exactly. gorgeous she looks. You know, exactly. she likes stuff like that. Exactly. You, know? you don't have to break the bank, but just so that I know that you're thinking about me throughout the day. So, I mean, just like how with the word of God, when you say you want to get, you want to get closer to God and you, you pray and you, um, read the Bible more, it's the same thing. You want to, Godfrey, you want to study your wife. You want to get to know everything about her because you want to be closer with her. It's a relationship, the same relationship that we have with God. So, um, you know, like I said before, the best advice we can give you is to put God first. Your devotionals, yes, have your, your individual devotionals, but also have your devotionals together so you guys can be on the same page. Pray together, that's important. Um, and basically talk about everything communication is important um from the biggest decisions to the little decisions that's finances um if you're gonna be together really be together you know no prenups or (laughs) that's just that's just my advice um what else babe and the devotion is important and even in the sense like uh, for example, let's say, you know, you guys got in an argument and you guys are mad at each other, you know, but you know that every day we have to do this devotional together. I don't think you can really, truly read God's word mm-hmm. and be mad at each other, you know, somehow the Holy Spirit is going to convict you in that process. So, you know, that's, that's how much, how powerful that devotion is. And I know for me as a man, um, one of my biggest struggles when, when we got married was, um, financials you know just talking about finances with my wife um and not trying to figure everything out on by myself you know that was a big um big issue for me you know trying to be you know oh macho and do everything on my own you know so us just sharing everything you know from the finance to you know uh the color of the drapes or whatever it is that you know we decide you know where we going on vacation you know just being together and sharing everything together is very important. Exactly. Um, some regular advice would be, you know, never go to bed, never go to bed angry with each other. Um, 
you know, don't always have everybody in your business, like like your family, I guess, and your close friends, because then once you're, you know, over it and once you've forgiven him, maybe sometimes they're harboring some um, bad feelings about your spouse, so you don't want to do that either. Um, like I said before, just surround yourself um, with greatness. Surround yourself with other couples that know what you're going through. Um, and even though you guys will be living together, you know, um, still set aside time to, to, to be together, whether, whether that's going on a date or right. taking vacation together. Like, um, every year I know, you know, something we look forward to is, um, you know, June 3rd, you know, we look, even though it's our anniversary, we look forward to that week. Mm -hmm. We call it our first, our second, our third, our Honey. fourth or honeymoon, yeah, you know? Exactly. So every year, you know, that's something my business partners know that we don't, there's no option. You know, I'm taking that vacation that, that time exactly. of the year. Um, and Godfrey, whatever you did to get her to say yes, keep on doing it. <laughs> don't stop. Keep whining and dining her, or whatever you did to get her, whatever you did to catch her eye, continue to do it. Just because you're married, that's not the end. It's the beginning of forever, so. And no matter what, divorce is not an option. Put God first, and we love you guys. Yes, we And do. we're very proud of you guys. Very proud. And um, we're looking forward to even going on a date with you guys. Exactly. Date night. Married couples, black young love. <laughs> All right, bye.
Is Gracious, Gracious Lord, Lord, what an what opportunity, opportunity we have to witness true love. love. In, spite In spite of all that we are experiencing, today, today has, has been a punctuation, punctuation of glory and divinity. And, divinity. and so, so Father, Father, we are excited, excited to invite you to this ceremony. True, true love has met, met. true love has worked, worked together, together they have planned. planned. And today, and today they are culminating the, the, the love through this, this ceremony, which you blessed in Canaan. Canaan. And, so and so, Father, we invite, invite you to be here, that your spirit work, work in its own way. way. And we, we thank you for, for the opportunity to experience what, what you are looking forward, forward to, that, that marriage, marriage ceremony in heaven. heaven. We, we look, look forward, forward to that. Now, now, Lord, Lord give, give us a little piece of that, that right, right now as, as we, we pray, pray this, this prayer in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Good afternoon, everyone. We'd like, like to welcome, welcome everyone here, here on behalf of the bride and groom for this wonderful, beautiful, beautiful occasion. occasion. I say thank, thank you for this wonderful weather. Thank you to God. Uh, thank you for uh, the, everyone for showing up today. And, and this beautiful union we're about to witness. We'd like to thank everyone that prepared themselves. And thank you. Matthew 9, verse 13. 
but go ye and, and learn, learn what this is needed. I desire, I desire mercy, mercy and, and not sacrifice, sacrifice for I came not to call the righteous, righteous but sin. Sin. Can we just praise the Lord for some shade? Throughout today's ceremony, you might see that the speaker and the preacher pause, and then if you see that or hear that, it's only because a train might be passing by. But I want to welcome you again here this afternoon. Something, something that I have, I have been anticipating for some, some time. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, after 12 months of pre engagement counseling, an additional six months of marriage counseling, after long debates over relationship roles, spiritual and spirited conversations, growth, past, well, it's not working, past. We're here. The day that even a worldwide pandemic could not stop. You two were meant to be together. Nadia, <laughs> we have been friends forever. Through every success you've made and every mistake I've made, we have a friendship that lasted the test of time. When you told me years ago you had a boyfriend named Godfrey, my first concern was, who was this guy? My second concern was, has he met Martin yet? Because you know that's a concern. I remember uh, being introduced to you, Godfrey. And you know, when you join a family, uh, some people have the unique ability of not being an extension to that family. You become a part of it. There are some relationships that, you know, the person that you marry just becomes that, that extra wheel. But you, you fit right in. You two are the best people I know. I don't have much more to tell you after two years of me talking. Um, but the Lord has uh, put something in my heart to share with you today on your special day. That love is mercy and not sacrifice. They will tell you that success means you need to sacrifice for one another. That you need to force yourself to be something that you don't want to be. But in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus rebukes that notion that a relationship is built simply by what you do. Why? Because acts of love that don't come from the heart isn't love. It's a performance. And performance without reason creates resentment. The Pharisees questioned Jesus because his disciples didn't fast as much as they did. Well, you can't define a successful relationship by comparing it to someone else's relationship. Nadia and Godfrey, your 
relationship now needs to be concentrated on what is genuine for you. Don't try to fast like others or date like others, give like others or love like others. When you love like God, what you do for each other will never be a sacrifice. When you practice empathy and love and mercy, it will give you and get you through every part of life's challenges. From this day forward, you have each other. It's not about what mom says or dad says. And eventually, even when Martine suggests. It's about how well you choose to love mercy. On my wedding day, my late father told me something I'd like to share with you. That your success will be defined not by how high you go, but how long you last. Well, it's how well you learn mercy. How fast you learn patience. How much you practice long suffering that will make your relationship last the test of time. You two are here for a reason. And I couldn't be more honored uh, to be here with you. Honor God. Remember faithfulness. Walk humbly and be intentional. This, this next, next moment, moment is a privilege, a privilege for me as well. well. As, as I, I say this, this I'm going to try not to get emotional. Get emotional. <laughs> Who, Who gives, gives this woman to be, be with this man? like for the parents of the bride and the groom to please stand. To the four of you, I want to honor you today. You've done a fantastic job. Your prayers your support from far will do what is necessary for them. Thank you for being great parents. You may be seated. This time, the bride and the groom have prepared vows to give to one another, and I hope you can make it through it. <laughs> this, this time I'm going to ask Godfrey to start. Because you're the priest, brother. asked what I put in your ring. You always asked what I had in your ring on the day I went to get the rings. And I always told you find it on your wedding day. Now simply put, there was nothing more I could put in it more than love. And everybody's probably thinking like, come on, that, that's it? And I could tell you right now, that's where my vows stop. But 
I'm going to take a different perspective on it because it's not just our English translation of love. In the Greek, they have a breakdown where they speak about the different categories of love. And um, in your ring, I have it written out, agape, storge, eros, pragma, philia. And you're probably wondering, what does that mean? It's all the ways that I plan to love you for the rest of my life. Yes, yeah. 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 Well, we can walk now. Trying to make it through this. Agape, an unconditional love. Storge, a familial love, eros, a romantic, never-ending, continuously chasing love, pragma, love that lasts forever, philia, the love we share as friends. And it's a funny insider which I actually share with everyone here. When I went to go get the rings made and I had it engraved on the inside, they actually only allowed one less character than I needed to finish the last word. And that day I was so mad until I put everything together and realized that at the very end was the E that starts the next word. And I was... All that time I was upset, and all that time I was wondering what else could have went wrong. COVID, I mean, I could go down the list, but I'll save that for another day. And I was just looking like, this couldn't, this can't be it. And then as I sat down to look at it, I realized that at the very end of Agape was the beginning of Eros to complete everything. And I hope and I pray amongst everything that our love revolves like this ring that our love never stops like a circle never stops i promise to love you like an infinity circle i promise to love you from now until i die and that will be the only day that i can't love you anymore i promise to cherish you i can't i can't compete your parents <laughs> But I'm a try. As much as I can, these are the vows I give to you. This August 10th, 2002. What would the church say? My, my first, first love, my, my dad, who, who taught, taught me the importance of prayer in the house and dedicating everything to God. My, my brother Uso, who taught me the benefits of being focused and working hard. He also ta is, is the one who taught me about hip hop, and that's why I love New York Knicks so much. My, <laughs> my, my younger brother, where, where do I begin? begin? He, he is, is the prime, prime example. example of what, what it means, means to have someone's back. And, and no, no matter what, what he's, he's always there. there. My, my nephew Nathaniel, the, the person to give me one of the best titles that, that I've ever had, of, of auntie. He's, he's also, also a hard worker, and, and everything that he does, he puts, he puts his own spin, spin on it. But, but you, you see the class and the, the perfection in it. Um, my, my additional man in my life, Arthur, Arthur 
he is, is my, my sister's, sister's husband, husband but he is, he is a part, part of the family. family. He, he showed, showed me that, that if you're going to do something, something and your name, name is going to be attached to it, yeah. yeah. make sure you do your best. Yeah. And, and then, then my uncle, uncle jean jean who's not here with us, in his life here, he taught us to live our best life. Don't let one day go by without enjoying it. If he was here right now, brother, we would have like a goat spinning in the corner, five cases of cola like I, Like he would be going in because that's just the type of uncle that he, he was to me. Now, having all of these great men in my life, I felt like, whoa, who's gonna try to measure up to them? So I was okay. I was like, yo, I'm good. I don't need to be married to nobody. I'm independent, I got a job. <laughs> but then there was you. The great Dr. Seuss says, once you're in love, you know you're in love when you can't fall asleep because the reality is finally better than your dream. Without, without Christ in our lives, none of this would be possible. Isaiah 40, 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings of, as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And with that being said, the wait is over. God free. God free. First and foremost, I promise to make sure our pygmy not only speak Haitian Creole, but also they speak Patois. I promise to encourage you and inspire you to stand by you and stand up for you. I promise to laugh with you, cry with you, grow with you. I will hold your hand with every one of our days together. I promise to be your navigator, best friend, and wife, honor, love, and cherish you through all life's adventures. I promise to share in your joys and sorrows in all that God has to offer us. You are my forever, my best friend, my dream come true. And now my husband. With these words and all of the words of my heart, yes, I marry you and bind my life to yours forever and always. This is time. Gifts that will be exchanged amongst each other, symbols uh, that will reflect the union that is being made. And so, we would ask the responsible parties uh, to place uh, the rings in the appropriate hands. And what the Lord has given. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you. Martin. Godfrey, uh, we'll start with you. I want you to uh, take the left hand of your bride. Place uh, the ring at the tip of her ring finger. Look into her eyes and repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and a reminder of my support as, as we face the world together. 
was there, he was dead. But... <laughs> perfect fit. Yeah. <laughs> Nadia, I want you to grab Godfrey's left hand. Hold the ring on the top of his ring finger, look into his eyes, and repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and a reminder of my support as we face this world together. As we face this world together. Wonderful. Don't worry, folks, we're almost done. This time, God, for you, you too far. Step in, step in. Thank you much, thank you, thank you. At this time, uh, the couple wants to uh, present a ceremony that unifies not just their love and their union, but two families and support a union that cannot be broken, that God brings together. Would ask for appropriate music to be played as the couple comes and a representative from each family comes and joins them here at the table for this special sand ceremony.
Friends and family, we've now reached the end of this ceremony. Before we finish, we'll have a prayer of consecration. Would ask for the congregation to stand. As we pray. Eternal Father, Prince of Peace, Spirit of the Living God, we're thankful for your presence today. Thankful that you are a God that knows the end from the beginning. As seen this moment, in this time. We're thankful that your purpose has brought us here today to witness love. We pray God now that as they commit themselves to each other, that you would be reminded of their commitment to you and they would be reminded of their commitment as well. God, I pray heaven's blessings be poured down upon them right now. That you, O oh Lord, would provide for all of their needs. Grant them, O oh God, the desires of their hearts. Bless them with a wonderful home. Bless them with increased finances. Bless them with great health. You give them wisdom. You give them discernment. You give them patience. You give them peace. Let them walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Help them to remember the accountability they have to each other and to continue to seek first your kingdom and his righteousness. We pray that on the day when the trumpet sounds and the clouds open, that this family would be represented and walk on that sea of glass. I pray, O oh God, for children, multiple children, increased children. Fill their house with children. And give them and remind them of the peace that surpasses all of their understanding. In all things, help them to honor you and trust you in the good times and the bad. Let them be faithful both to them themselves, to their partner, and to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Well, this is the time now for all of you who have your phones, some of you I've been recording, I've been taking pictures, uh, this is the moment you have been waiting for, and I hope you have an iPhone to record it properly. <laughs> A little bit of shape, a little bit of shape. Little bit of shape. <laughs> Godfrey, I want you to grab Nadia's hands. And I want you to get closer. Closer than that. We're finding things together for the rest of our lives. Okay. Let's go. COVID. Matt? Okay. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, by the power invested in me by the state of New York, and as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, under the eyes and the permission of God, I present to you now Mr. and Mrs. 
Godfrey Willis. What the Lord brings together, let no man put asunder. You may now kiss your bride. I'm <laughs> a